Hello, my name is Jack and welcome to EPC. Today we're going to be reviewing the Intel Core i9-11900K, which Gigabyte generously sent to us. Uh, we were doing unboxing, but it came in this. Uh, it, I think, I think it, it makes it cooler. Um, it is a consumer chip. It's not necessarily an engineering sample that they sometimes send out and leak. It is a consumer chip, as you can see, with the writing on the CPU. It's uh, ready for consumers. That's how they always look when they're rolled out to consumers. Um, but this is what it looks like. It's the CPU. You know, they mostly look the same. It's a square uh, with an IHS on it. And then you get your contact pads on the back. And that, that's, that's about all there is to say about the actual look of the CPU. Um, so I'm going to tell you my honest opinions and what I think about it. Um, first is just some information for you. Okay, so I've been benchmarking the CPU for the last few days and I know I've spent a lot of time with it. I know how it works, I know how it performs, so I'm, I'm pretty familiar with it. So I'm going to give you a little bit of information about the CPU now. So the Core i9-11900K has 8 cores and 16 threads, which is too less than the 10900K. The reason for this is the new CPU is based on the Cypress Cove architecture, which is then again based on the Sunny Cove architecture, which Intel uses in their 11th gen mobile chips. The only difference is, is this is then scaled up to a 14 nanometer process as opposed to a 10. The 11900K will have a boost frequency of 5.3 and an all-core base frequency of 4.8. The launch price will be $539, which is $60 more than the 10900K. So we tested the CPU. Uh, the test will be on our Benchmarks channel, so go over there and subscribe. I tested this on around 16 games and a few synthetic benchmarks. So I have got the specs here. I'm just going to rattle off some of the key features of the specs we're using on our test bench. So we're using the MSI Gaming X Trio RTX 3080. We're using the Z590i Vision from Gigabyte. We're using 16 gigabytes of DDR4 Corsair Vengeance clocked at 3000 megahertz. For the cooler, we're using the Fractal Design Celsius 240 and the power supply is the Fractal Design 860 Ion Plus. So let's throw it into CSGO and see what kind of performance we can expect from the i9. As you can see, it hovers around 269 FPS average in 1080p. CSGO is a less intensive game graphically, but it does hit your CPU a little bit. And with it being competitive, you want the high FPS, so it does pretty well in this. So we'll throw it into Monster Hunter World now, which is a lot more of a graphically intensive game, but also it's online as well, so it uses a bit more of your CPU than CSGO. As you can see, it offers about 119 FPS average in 1080p, which is again, pretty good. Similar to Monster Hunter World, we also tested it in Rust, which is again an online game, which offers about 119 FPS in 1080p, which is good for Rust. It is a very hard game to run nowadays, uh, graphically and CPU bound. With it being an online game, it's got a lot more to render than just yourself. So that was the normal games we kind of test when we're looking at GPUs and general performances of full systems in general. But now we're going to move on to more CPU intensive games like Red Dead, GTA, stuff like that. So we'll throw it into a more CPU heavy game like Red Dead Redemption 2. It offers us around 74 FPS at 1080p. Red Dead Redemption is good because it's got a lot of things to render. It's got to render physics, characters. Although we only use the inbuilt benchmark, it is designed to test your CPU and your GPU. So again, it gives us around 75, which is good. This CPU is pretty good. It performs fairly well. So similar to Red Dead Redemption, GTA in a similar engine has got to render a lot of things like characters, cars, pass, AI, stuff like that. So it sits around 93 FPS average in 1080p, which is good. Again, a bit more than Red Dead because it's a lot less graphically intensive. So obviously that's just a top down view of some of the games we tested and the performance you can expect in one resolution. If you want to know more, and you want to watch a full in-depth benchmark, go over to EPC Benchmarks and check the full benchmark there. It's full of games, synthetics, everything you'd need to know for the i9-11900K. So throughout the whole of the benchmarks and throughout the whole of the time I was using the CPU, it never hit more than about 63 degrees, which is pretty good as Intel CPUs can get a bit toasty when you're really hammering them like I've been doing, but paired with the Celsius 240, never hit more than 63, so that's a very healthy temperature. So using the CPU in general everyday tasks like web browsing, video editing, stuff like that, we never saw any stuttering, everything seemed fast, responsive, everything you'd expect from a high-end CPU, it did, no problems there. So comparing it to the 10900K, the generation lower of the same CPU, we saw the 10900K get a benchmark score in Cinebench R23 of 1386 compared to the 11900K that got 1712. So that's considerably better single core performance for the 11900K. 
However, the multi-core performance test done on the 10900K saw it get a score of 16875 on Cinebench R23, but compared to our 11900K on the same benchmark, saw it get a not so good 15432, which is considerably lower considering the 10900K was the last generation. Okay, so I'm gonna refer back to my notes now for some notes on motherboards and how they're gonna support this CPU. So, as well as the new CPU, motherboard manufacturers are introducing new chipsets with the likes of Z590, B560, offering PCIe 4 support, while for the first time, the new B560 and H570 chipset motherboards will also offer memory overclocking, so it's good to know, good to use with your new i9-11900K CPU. So all that's really left is to give you my honest opinion on the i9-11900K, and that is, it's pretty good. It's a new Intel CPU. So the previous iteration, the 10900K, does have slightly better multi-core performance, which would probably make it more suited for a workstation-oriented build. And you can definitely pick it up for a lot cheaper than $539. As we said, uh, MSRP launch price, $539, is $60 dearer than the 10900K. And you can definitely pick a 10900K up second-hand for a lot less than that. So for workstations, I'd say go for the 10900K. Not to say that this will be bad, just based on pure numbers, 10900K. The 11900K does offer brilliant gaming performance in CPU heavy games. And in rare cases where only one core is getting hammered, that single core performance really comes through. Again, more in-depth benchmarks on the Benchmark channel. We have a video up there right now of the full benchmark we performed on the 11900K. So as an AMD fan, I was pretty impressed with the performance of this chip. I mean, will it sway me? I don't think so, but I can definitely respect this CPU and I fully understand that it definitely has a cemented place in the market. So this has been our review of the Intel Core i9-11900K. Thank you very much for watching. As I've mentioned a few times in this video, there will be a full in-depth benchmark review on our Benchmarks channel. So go ahead and click here for that video. I don't know where it'll fit, but there you go. Um, this has been Jack from WePC. Thank you very much for watching. Give us a like, subscribe. Again, head over to the Benchmark channel. Give that a like as well, because we're going to be doing a lot with this CPU and comparing it to loads of other CPUs. So stay tuned for that over there. Uh, this has been Jack. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.